Welcome to Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective podcast, where we meet experts from all walks of life to learn their intrinsic motivation so that they can share it with the world. What do we have in store today? Stay tuned to find out more. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in podcast land. This is another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. I am Hamza. And I am David. And we have my good friend, Archita Patel. Uh, She was in on some of our earlier podcasts. She was talking about the Avatar past. And when I had spoken with her some time ago, we were just following up just to see, you know, we, since we know each other, see how things were going. And she was bubbling because she had just come back from Orlando, and she was a part of the new Avatar course that they had down there. She was there for, what, three weeks or so, and has a bunch of new information about what's going on with the Avatar path. I thought it would be great to have her back and learn all the newest, latest information that she has to offer. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Archna Patel to the podcast. Welcome, Archna. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we had fun when we talked with you last time. And and prior to talking to you the last time, uh, David and I didn't know anything about Avatar. And, you know, we, we speak with a lot of, a lot of people and, and a lot of different modalities. And it's like, um, it's like uh, we call them like sequels or series of movies in that you don't just do one thing or one modality and ride off to the sunset. It seems like there's an infinite number or infinite possibilities that exist uh, in life. And there's infinite possibilities that also exist within each modality. And it sounds like you are continuing to grow with the folks at the Avatar Pass. Is that correct? I am. I've actually found them to be very powerful tools. Uh, I just put the phone down before we got connected uh, with another master that we were working on that she had something that was happening in her business that she wanted to look at what was the cause of that, and then um, what tool can we apply to really relieve her of that experience and then change that experience to what she does prefer. And I find it to be um, very, uh, very pure, and I find it to be very, very helpful. And I find it uh, that every time I use the tools, I get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And the world just makes sense after I use it. So, <laughs> Who wouldn't want that? I mean, that, that's fantastic. Who, and before we start right. diving into it, if you could just give us a little bit of background about Avatar, what's the foundation and then uh, what's, what, what do you see as a differentiator? You know, there's a lot of people that talk about different tools and such. Uh, what, what separates Avatar from the other tools that exist out there? So I'm going to say this from my experience and my perspective because um, that's probably the truest thing that I can say, right, is how I experience it. And everybody experiences it. In their own, from their own mental blueprint. I find it to be um, an equivalent. So when I took the course years ago, I think uh, 2001 was probably the first year where I took the full course. And I find it to be equivalent of a 10 years of meditation that I had been practicing meditation on a daily basis. And in the beginning stages, you're just fighting with your mind and you're just learning to relax and be in your, in your own self and letting your mind just accept whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you are, right, in the moment. 
and and I needed two parts of me when I was meditating. I needed one part of me to be able to stay calm, and the other was always playing this coach. Stay calm, stay calm, stay calm, stay calm, focus, focus, breathe, right? And so immediately uh, there are two different, the mind is playing two different roles trying to get this to work. And you can already feel that there's a struggle. Avatar, the nine-day course, within nine days, it's like, this part is gone, this part is gone, and all that's left is you. So you get to experience what people are seeking or wanting to get to. You get to touch on it and taste it and experience it within nine days. And I thought that was very, very, very powerful. So that's the equivalent of when you tell me how is it different from anybody anywhere else, that differentiates it from everything. Because I, most of the time, I would be reading and trying to understand it with my mind. And it takes me years before I can uh, pass through the mind and get to the root of the, the experience. Where with the tools, I'm able to playfully get to the root and bypass the mind and then learn how to operate the mind from that space. So it's, uh, I think Harry calls it that we didn't have an operating manual for the mind and the tools in, in the course really give you that operating manual on how to use your mind to create what you prefer, how to identify what you're experiencing and change the experience. How do you identify when you're looking at, uh, and this is probably more of a mental, which you had gotten through, so that's why I just want to do this little exercise, if you don't mind, is if you're going through an instance, your mind is trying to remember something close to it so it can relate or make sense of it. But now it's actually removed, as you had ex- uh, eloquently explained. So how are your experiences now where the mind is subservient to you? Well, um So I'm going to tell you that uh, I know the tool. I use the tool regularly. And I I can tell when I have the mind that all wants to get all involved in in my situation and wants to solve the problem or wants to figure the solution out or wants to tell other people what to do, right? Because the mind wants to protect me or save me or wants to move me forward. My brain, you know, just it just wants to be in everything. And um, somebody gave me a really good example, and they said, you know, the mind is like this child. And sometimes you just have to tell the child that you sit over here and sit next to me. I'm right here. And I promise I'll have time for you. But in the moment, I'm doing this, <laughs> right? And, and just having that separation, experiencing that separation is really um, just being aware of where the mind is and are you, are you in the mind or are you free from the mind? That's, that's the, the clue, and I think that awareness is what really helps. So is, is the mind subservient at moments? Does it always want to get into everything that I uh, that I, that's happening? Yes, and then I have to be paying attention to it. And sometimes I'll, you know, it's 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 human. I'll get into it, and then I'll have to figure my way out, or I'll have to um, identify. Okay, how did I get in here? <laughs> it feels like you know this 
getting into something and if you're like, okay, how do I get out? And I think that that is the tools that he provides so well is how do you get out? And that is the freedom that I experience because now I'm not afraid of getting into messes. I'm not afraid of experiencing. I'm not afraid of trying something because I have tools to help me get out. Mm. Most people don't experience life because they don't want to get stuck in that experience, and so they're avoiding it. But if you have tools, you can go play. You can just try it on to see if it's you or not. And I think that's a lot of, that's fun. (laughs) That's fun. There's stories that people talk about when, if they were in an accident or if they were inebriated, where they, you know, as they're recalling, they say, you know, maybe the next day or a week or two later, they're like, I stood outside myself and I saw it happening. It was very slow. Like, do you see something similar where you're in a situation and you can actually determine whether oh, this is a, a, a situation that my mind's trying to control or manipulate versus being present in the moment? Are you able to see a differentiation? I am. So I can tell when I'm in it and when I'm out of it. When I'm in it, I feel limited. I, I feel at the mercy of whatever is happening, uh, right? And I, when I'm out of it, I can actually see the bigger picture. I can actually um, figure out what's the next step because I can, I can see it from 30,000 feet. So that's the difference. So when I'm out of it, I have more options. But, yes, I can tell that. Um, and, and I think, so let's put it this way. I have a thing that I say this to a lot of people, and that is when you're in the picture, you can't see yourself. And the way to see yourself, to see what's really happening and how you're, how you're being, is to step out of the picture. We do this all the time for other people, don't we? Can't we see what's happening to other people and how they're doing it? We can tell. We can probably guess, um, you know, what they're feeling, what they're experiencing, and we can tell that they're in a bad relationship or they're making bad choices. But when, what we can't see is our own. And the tools help us to look at that, look at our own, and just look on what's right here and what's inside of us instead of trying to go and fix it out there, right? Isn't that what Michael, uh, Michael Jackson talks about? If you want to change the world, start looking in the mirror. <laughs> you don't fix the mirror. Don't fix the guy in the mirror. Just fix you, and then the mirror will get changed. Yeah. Um, but these are the tools that provide a safe space guidance, support, um, and that power, powerful, powerful tools and the ability, the skill level, to be able to look in the mirror and correct what you want inside of you and then change the reflection. So you're that's, why I find it in, that's why I find it intriguing that that's why I wanted you to highlight that because uh, David and I were in a, in a podcast recently where uh, we were talking to folks, and like you said, we can, especially if you, you have uh, intuition, you can see it in other people. You just can't see it in yourself. And you're saying that through what you learned with the with, with the avatar path, you're you're actually able to uh, see outside that picture. So um, right. And we all can. That's the right, and that's the training. The training is so that we can um, see it for our own selves, and to change it, and to create it, and to just decide what we want. So, I I was in a very. I'm an, I'm from a culture that is very a 5,000-year-old culture that this is the way things are, right? Mm -hmm. And everywhere you look, people are behaving in certain ways to 
stay within the confines of that culture because it's safe, it's secure, it feeds them, it takes care of them. And with same with religion, same with your friend circle. We, we hang around these circles just because it really uh, helps us. I was able to see, this was probably before Avatar, Avatar just enhanced it for me, and, and, I, and I, I can see it on a global scale now, that, th- that people are within that box, that limitation. And then what they, who they truly are, they're not aware of. It doesn't, they don't want to break the box. They don't want to get out of the box because it's too scary. Um, and I probably wouldn't have done it when I, and I was looking for it. I noticed, um, all the females on my mom's side, my dad's side, on my husband's side, everybody was walking just a little bit, you know, careful, not really being themselves, being their true self, just staying within the boundaries. And not really being themselves and not really being joyful and just keeping things going, not wanting to rock the boat, not wanting to be asking some challenging and difficult questions, just not going there. And I think I never learned how to stay in the box. I should have, but I didn't. <laughs> I, just, I just kept asking questions of like, why doesn't this work? And... Um, and I, I didn't understand, so I, I guess I was always out of the box in some respect. But I was looking yes. for a way out. It's interesting it when, like when you take a step back because I'm, I'm looking at, like, 2018, and some people say, well, it's 2018, so things should be different. And, you know, you hear these type of, I guess, battles, like you were just saying, with the mind versus the spirit. And the first thing I thought about as you were saying that is a troublemaker, right? Because people are like, well, oh, that's she's, right. not, she's not in the confines. So <laughs> what, what was it like? Because you're actually going against the grain from everyone on all sides. Like, uh, I guess you didn't, you weren't even really worried about how they felt about you at that point. Or was it a gradual process for you to become more empowered? Um. If it was in the beginning without the tools, it was exhausting. It wasn't fun. It would, without the tools, without the, this level of support and tools, um, it, would, it would just be, it would be better to just stay and do the best I can and provide. And that, that, that's as far as I would have gone. Is, and I think it's the tools that really said, oh, there are possibilities. Oh, this is just what, this is what I'm creating for my life and I can do something different. So it put the power inside of me. And Harry said something um, and I picked up on it and I took it to heart and he said when you follow somebody you go where they're going not where you want to go so it really is about tapping into who you are and what you want to experience and following your true inner wisdom and so, so I've made decisions and when I was when I felt like I was following somebody, I would step back and take a look, and is this the route that I want to go? And then they would be, no, it looks good. It looks right, nice, bright, sunny. looks like a very nice oasis, but that's not where I want to go. It doesn't feel like me. I just keep walking. I keep using the tools and exploring, and because if it's, when it feels right, that's the right place to be. It, 
it does feel right. Your body does give you a well, like a tuning fork, right? It gives you a signal, yes, no. And a yes, a resounding yes, is like joy. <laughs> so you just keep following that resounding yes, and that's, that's your journey. So I just keep following that. And now do I hit the other side? Yes. And then I have to ask, is this what I want? Is, is this where I'm supposed to be? And it could be somebody could offer me lots of things. I, I think a lot of women, and I'll say this from within my personal experience, they'd be happy with beautiful dresses, maybe jewelry. <laughs> um, they might be enticed by, I don't know, somebody really giving them stuff. That just doesn't really make, it doesn't work for me. I am looking for inspiration. I'm looking for connection. I'm looking for being real. I'm looking for uh, respect. That has more value than, than the stuff that's going to be, you know, I guess wither away at some point. So I never really got into, let me add more jewelry to my collection or add more dresses. Because I don't know if that's me. That's just not me. So let me ask you, with uh, you had mentioned feels right and joy. So just playing devil's advocate for something very basic, right? So if I, it's Monday, I wake up, hit the alarm, snooze button too many times, it's raining outside, mm. uh, I'm in traffic, I'm going to be late for work, I missed a meeting, like nothing's going right that day. How, how are you, would you use your tool, right, because that doesn't feel right and there's no joy in that moment. So how are you using your tool in that scenario? I call him a friend. I'm in this. Help. Um, I, I use the tool, so the tools are, uh, I can use it on my own, or I can ask a, another avatar friend to coach me on a specific tool to, to snap out of it, to get out, uh, to shift. And I think that's the, that's the idea, because, um, yeah, there are days, especially um, if, if you're, if you're not feeling good, if you haven't, just, you know, I mean, let's put it this way. I had an experience yesterday. I'm going to say this really recent uh, experience, right? I had an experience yesterday that it, something was just um, coming at me where I was allowing somebody to, um, I don't know, ask questions that I felt like that were not, that were inappropriate. And so normal reaction for people would be like, well, that's not, he's not, he's wrong. And he's doing this or he's doing that. And, and I called a friend of mine and I, my question is, well, how am I creating this? And the truth is I am creating it. But how? What am I doing to attract something like this? And we went through, we used a tool, we went through it, and all of that was cleaned up within a matter of minutes. And to get to the root cause of how I attracted from this experience and what did I need to learn from it was cleaned up within, I want to say, 15 minutes. People, with the tools, you go deeper and quicker. So that's, I want to get to the bottom of it. I want to be done. Sure, it seems like when your your mind really wants to control it, especially at that time, it seems like it, it actually goes slower. But having somebody who's aware of the tools and guide you um, to find what's causing it, and how I'm creating it, all of a sudden, the lesson that I need to learn is there. 
right? Isn't that what we go through? We go through an experience, and uh, there's no such thing as failure if we learn the lesson. So an experience comes to us, and if it's preferred, we enjoy it. If it's not preferred, then we learn from it. So how long does it take for us to learn that lesson? Now, it could, we could let it happen on its natural path. People say this all the time, that when you're grieving, it takes time to grieve, that you'll get over it. Just give it time. My experience is the tools and the support reduce that time so that you're, you've gone through it, you've learned the lesson, you've gotten it, you've, gr- you've grieved it, and now you're ready to move on. That, I think that's the piece for me. Is it helps me to that point where, okay, I'm ready to move on. So we all come across hurdles, but do we have a set of tools, a support system, something that is going to work for us every single time at our fingertips? at our skill level, and that helps us move on. Mm-hmm. And then we're, go, we're ready to go play again. So how long do we stay in um, the situation, the experience, the, um, the grief of it is really up to us now, up to me, right, because of that. So very powerful tools, very, very powerful tools. Just listening to you, Dave and I were talking the other day, and we were laughing about um, when we first learned uh, some of our initial tools like grounding. And so when you're working with the, with the facilitator, that grounding exercise may be, you know, five to ten minutes. And now, many years later, you can ground in like a second, right, just because right. you're so used with the tools and such. And so I want to I want to kind of push uh, pitch that back to you as far as you know 2001 you're going on your first nine day course what's an inter and I don't know anything about Avatar and you're telling me about it and and I go like what's an introductory tool that you guys use that is like can be ap- applicable to the layman that'll get them on the path. Like you're on a 17 year path with these folks. So like, let's go back to day one of one of your first tools that you want, that you learned to use. So, okay. Um, let's see. Actually, I'll, there is a, um, there's an introduction that anyone can experience an avatar. And avatar, the purpose of avatar is to let people understand that their beliefs create their experiences and that there's a connection between the two. And the introduction gives them that experience that whatever they're experiencing, we can, um, there's a belief that is creating that. And that belief can be created and discreated with ease. And so the introduction really gives that really uh, personal experience to taste it because it's not a reading. It's not about reading. It's not about knowledge. It's not about the mind. It is an experiential understanding. So... um, and the first two days of that is just that, is to really go through layers and layers of exercises that, um, that really start surfacing and really giving that personal experience. And the first two days are really 295. It is, it is amazing because you come out really understanding um, to much, much, much deeper level of, of you and what makes you tick and what makes you work. And each person is different, so there isn't, there isn't an answer for everybody. It's whatever answer comes up for them is their answer. So did you want to go through an exercise? Yeah, I think uh, for people listening, for the audience, I think they'd like to go through an exercise. Sure, why not? 
Okay. And we'll, we'll, so, you can use David since he's being quiet today. <laughs> it's a good conversation. <laughs> I'm a good listener. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, how about if we uh, uh, do the compassion exercise? Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so, so I'll just read the instructions. So this is a, to increase the amount of compassion in the world. The instructions are, this exercise can be done anywhere that people con- congregate, so airports, malls, parks, beaches, etc. It should be done on strangers unobtrusively from some distance. Try to do all the five steps on the same person. Expected results are a personal sense of peace. So, so put, uh, pick a somebody in your life that you would like to extend compassion to. You have somebody? Yeah. Okay. So with attention on the person, repeat to yourself, just like me, this person is seeking some happiness for his or her life. And I just say that to myself or out loud? Mm-hmm. You can just say it to yourself. Okay. Yeah. With attention on the person, repeat to yourself, just like me, this person is trying to avoid suffering in his or her life. With attention on the person, repeat to yourself, just like me, this person has known sadness, loneliness, and despair. With attention on the person, repeat to yourself, just like me, this person is seeking to fulfill his or her needs. With attention on the person, repeat to yourself, just like me, this person is learning about life. It takes about a couple minutes to do the exercise. Very quick. And it really is, to me, it makes me feel connected to that person. They're not strangers anymore. I, uh, he has a really good um, definition of uh, love, which I have not heard anywhere, and I love his definition of love. Um, so love is an expression of and the willingness to uh, allow something to change Mm. Uh, I like that like that yeah yeah. I don't have it exactly the way he says it, but I, it's, it's, per, it's an expression of the willingness to let people change and not, not bind them with our own, own perspectives, right? Such yeah. freedom. Kind of like accepting them as they are or who they are. Yeah. And if they, if they, if that in, up to and including change, yeah. 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 And allowing them to choose whatever change they would like to create. Could you imagine when we were going through teenage years? <laughs> how, how freeing it would be for our parents to let us really choose our own experiences without the pressure of the expectations and letting us learn from that 
and and be a guide and not really a um, not close off and not have that uh, feeling of I'm doing something wrong. It's a lot of love. Yeah. It makes me think, Archana, of my, it's just my awareness of 20, since 2012, there's been a lot of groups that do, um, like, global prayers, like, at a certain time, you know, they'll reach a grid for, you know, love or, you know, some type of intention. And that was a great exercise that you did with David. Do you guys also do it in groups to have, like, like you said, compassion in the world for the world? Uh, for as a group as well? We do. We do. We do. We actually have compassion cards that we hand to um, people. I don't know if I've given that to you, Hamza, but we have compassion cards that we hand out, and we want people to experience compassion and send compassion. Um, just it's really us letting go of our expectation of how things should run. And maybe if the fear isn't there, then we can actually put love out there, right? Mm-hmm. And we operate differently if we operate from love. Mm-hmm. And what I what I was also interested in speaking with you, uh, because I always think about this every year for me for uh, college reunion or when you know when they play their homecoming game, and all my friends from all over the country come in, and and you're trans transferred back, transported back to, like, freshman, sophomore year, you know, and everybody's, like, 20 years later. And you're just so excited to see them, and you're present in the moment, and, you know, time kind of stands still, or flies, really. You know, they come in on Thursday, and then it's like, wow, it's Sunday evening already, you got to go back home? And it sounds like just talking to you, it's a little bit like that when you go to these uh, Avatar courses, because from 2001, you may have forged a relationship and you may potentially see some of these people or reunite with them yearly. Is, is that the case uh, in your last event earlier this year? It's always the case. It's, um, it's a very um, high vibration space mm-hmm. because people are operating at a different level. If they're... If they, whatever life situations that is going on, they come get the support using tools, and they can really go with a huge. It really cleans up. A, so I, here's what I say, right? Because um, you know when you're driving and the, and it's uh, um, snowing. And you have to, the, it snows, but you, after a while you have to wipe it clean and then you go a little bit more and it gets all muddy and it gets all dirty and then you have to wipe it clean again. And, and so my, this is my analogy and that is I go to courses and it gets wiped clean and I can start, I can see clearly again, right? And I can change my vibration. I can, I can see what I'm doing and I can stop doing things that aren't supportive when we start any journey, um, we have to. We, when we start looking inward, there is limitations, habits, um, challenges, fears. All of this, um, when we can actually see it clearly, all that goes away, and you're operating from a different level of being and becoming more and more yourself or your true nature without. Um, without the filters that Harry calls them identities, that we we play roles. So instead of being the role, so that was my challenge. I was really good, uh, me and my husband were really good at playing husband and wife. We were good at playing house, but we weren't really good at letting the roles go and being ourselves. Mm -hmm. So people get stuck in the roles instead of being who they are. So a role of a son, role of a daughter, role of a mother, role of a father, but underneath the role are our true selves. And most of us hide in roles. We get stuck in them. We don't know how to 
uh, feel safe enough to let the road go and be ourselves. And my personal experience, and I, and it's a decision that we make. And I realized early on that this was the safest place I was going to find on the planet. It felt that safe. So it was a decision to say, okay, we're going to go deeper <laughs> because we're, we're, we all protect ourselves in some way, right? And as you work through the materials and as you work through the tools, um, I came to a decision point and mm-hmm. recognized, I'm like, oh, I, have to, I have to decide now. Is this is this going to be the the thing that's going to I'm going to use to go through? Do I feel safe enough to go to that level? And and I, it was an instant uh, uh, knowing that this is the safest place I'm going to find to do this kind of work. And still today, that is that is the case. Even the example of, of what I talked about with homecoming, it's really interesting. Like there, there's some folks that you'll see at the games that you may not have seen for 20 years, and so their memory of you is 20 years old, right? And you could be totally different. So sometimes people have that expectation of who you used to be. Uh, for example, I, I was watching this TV show uh, called Black Lightning, and entertainers have – the, the fluidity to change roles, right? But we may like them in one role. So in the in this TV show, they had Jill Scott, who's a great singer. She always plays, like, these good roles. And in, in that TV show, she's a villain. And for, like, the part of the show, I couldn't even get out of my mind. Like, how could that hurt? How could she be a villain? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, right, it's like it's like on well, one you're you're following your own path, but when you interact with others, right, they may have a certain expectation and may not want that want that vision of you to change, which could, like you said, is limiting. So, it, how did you just for 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 us and for listeners, like, show us if you can kind of walk us through how you are able to. Uh, being your own path and be, you know, be empowered with that and also letting others know that, you know, you, like you have made that shift. So what, what's the best way or in your experience to kind of go through that? So a lot of compassion, a lot of compassion exercise. When, when I start moving forward and start, shifting my roles and my responsibilities and 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 I'm no longer that that person anymore. So jump. I would just say how high. That that was the relationship that we started out with. And it was like that all almost into 13, 15 years of my marriage. I was very, very, it was a very codependent relationship. I was unhappy, and I couldn't figure out how to, do, um, you know, build a new one. And so as I took the courses, I the, the hooks that she had to hook me in with uh, the guilt trips or whatever she said that made it work before, the buttons that she pushed before, I had eliminated them. They're no longer in my space. So she did not know how to get me back the old way. So, but I knew that. I knew what I was doing. I knew that that's what was happening. So it became my responsibility in order to keep the relationship and rebuild a new relationship with her. It became my responsibility, because I'm the one that's evolving and changing, to reach back to her as an adult form. This is how I would like it. What do you think about this? Let's look at it from a different angle. Um, what's, what's really bothering you, right? And, and that... Had I given up and walked away or ran away and doing my own thing and just separated, we would have been hurt. Uh, It would have been incomplete. It would have felt um, 
she would have felt violated and abandoned. And so I, I would continuously, because I was very close to my mom, I loved her, so I continuously uh, stayed connected, knowing where she is, knowing she, she wants me to do certain things a certain way. She sees me as that little girl. Um, it was really interesting. I had moved back to Chicago, and I told my mom, I said, Mom, this is a great opportunity for us to get to know each other. And it was so instinctive instinctive of her. She's like, what's there to get to know? You're my daughter. <laughs> so there was no idea in her mind that I'm a separate being. <laughs> You're my daughter. You belong to me. This is the way it is. I tell you, you do it. <laughs> right? So going from that to first really having my own legs and finding out who I am and what do I really want, and getting, staying true to myself gives her the freedom to show up as herself. So then yeah. I, when I reach back, I give her the space to be herself so she feels a little bit at ease. Mm-hmm. Actually, a lot at ease because at some point, everybody else is playing those roles. Now I'm not playing that role anymore. I'm just being mean. So that gives her the freedom to express what she wants. It tells, it gives her the space to tell me what she doesn't like, what doesn't work for her. All of a sudden, we're looking at a relationship, adult to adult. So she did tell me before she passed away. She said, you know, you may not tell me all the things that I want to hear, but whatever you do tell me is true. So that which is exactly every relationship, right? She may not want to hear it, but she does recognize that I'm not lying to her. I'm not playing a role. I'm not cajoling. I'm not sneaking. I'm just being honest and real. So she feels safety in that, and that is the foundation to build a new relationship. Sounds like a lot of growth there. <laughs> it's a lot of it's a lot of awareness, right? It's a lot of yes. effort that I decided to put into this relationship. But here's Absolutely. the thing: I don't have relationships that are just sitting around, <laughs> that are just there. I don't have as if um, I don't have a lot of extras to make it look and feel good. Either we have a really good relationship and we're working at it, or not, and that's okay, (laughs) right? (laughs) But whatever it is, we're going to get to the real of it. (laughs) So, and that gives the freedom, and I think that, I I think that helps everybody on the planet. When people know that they can be themselves, then it helps other people to be themselves, too. So I just keep working on this. Yeah, I think it's probably a life lifelong thing now, right? Like if knowledge and experiences are infinite, you're going to continue to um, be in that state of awareness. And so for someone that likes to get like, to be at your level or to continue or get on the path of continuous growth, I'd like for you to talk a little bit. I'm, I'm at the avatarcourse.com site. We're looking at the advanced courses. And so if you could tell us the difference between the Avatar Master course versus the Avatar Professional course or the Azur, uh, Avatar Wizard course. What's the differences between Okay. Them? Um, very easy. Uh, the Avatar course is about the part, me. So, for example, if I'm taking the course, it's all about me, my life, and my building my skill level to create the life I prefer, learning a skill level to manage my life. So I can be, um, he calls it source being, being the source of my life, being the creator in my life. The master course is teaches how to help other people, how to be in service to them. Without the master course, I would not be able to help my mother. 
The professional course is a leadership course. How do you lead and guide and direct? The wizard course is a course for how do we support and serve the planet? What's in the planet that we can change and how do we own things that we are not wanting to own, right? (laughs) There are things that people do that we don't prefer, we don't like, but if we have resistance to it, we know that it's going to continue. So instead of directing our attention to resist it, we actually own it and look at a deeper level how we're creating something out in the universe. And when you took the original class back in 2001, that that was the introductory class, correct? So that was a nine-day course. And then when I spoke with you back when you had just come back from the conference this year, I think it was three weeks. So is is that usually the gradual progression, or is that more on an individual uh, person-to-person basis? Do you get to determine how long you stay, or is that all together? Well, it was it was 13 days, so it was two weeks. Okay. And that was the wizard course. Give me one second. And the the wizard course is more uh, it is more flexible because you're there deliberately working on all the life situations that you want to work on. And by working on you, oh, um, it helps the planet. And that's, that's the whole intention. So you are working on yourself, but it does serve the planet on a bigger scale. So it is, it is more flexible. Um, it does start at the same time. Uh, everybody starts on the same day, same time. But everybody is working, working within their own personal integrity. And that is something that I think it really helps people. It helped me. It helped me identify where am I out of integrity? What am I really doing? Not just what I think I'm doing, what I say I'm doing, but what am I really doing? And then, uh, and then change the experience from that. And that's pretty it's amazing to see 3,000 people work at that level, 3,000 people from all over the planet to work at that level. So the mission of Avatar is to create an enlightened planetary civilization. And when I'm at the wizard course, that's what I experience, an enlightened planetary civilization. And everybody operates at that level as you get a taste of what life could be, what the world could be at that level. So helping everybody at that. It's amazing. So you can imagine that that would be such a high that you would never want to miss that again, right, (laughs) to experience the world at that level. No, that's what I like uh, talking to you because, you know, we have what's called the – seminar withdrawal where you have that that heightened awareness and and feeling great and joy and all that during that weekend and then on Monday you're back to you know your regular world and and people kind of default back to that so you know I I think with your stick with itness I think that that's a differentiator in itself and you know that's why whenever we talk to you about it you're really excited about it so you know it it definitely comes across it's really simple it works I wouldn't stick to something if it was if it didn't work. It works. Mm-hmm. It works every time. It, so this is the only reason why I stick with it because it works. <laughs> right. <laughs> now I mean, I, yes, I, I have to use it to make it work. Right. I have to work it so it works. But because it works, I work it. <laughs> So two questions for you because we're we're at the top of the hour. One is uh, on that avatarcourse.com or, excuse me, theavatarcourse.com, they have uh, find a local master and then they have the other courses. So what 
for people listening and they want to go to the site, what are the first steps that they need to take? Would they seek their local master first or go to the uh, courses and, and then find their local master? How, what's the process, protocol? So there isn't a protocol. Um, if you want to do an introduction, find a local master. If you want to go, uh, go to the site and talk to Star's Edge directly and find a master that way too, there isn't a wrong way to do it. <laughs> it that would be, I think it's totally okay either way. A local master will give you a personal one-on-one -on -one experience because they'll be right in your area. You can meet with them and experience it in person. But it's just as good to do it over the phone, over the website, uh, because the space is there. So there isn't a wrong way to do it. I find everybody does it. Um, I actually found a local master when I, when I was going through this, because I really was looking for it really like I need it now kind of feeling right. I was in emergency mode. I needed, I needed oxygen quickly as possible. So that's what I did. But it works either way. And you're a local master now as well. So for people that listen to the podcast and they go to the site, they, don't, they may not know anyone, but they did hear from you. And so how would they get yeah. in touch with you? They are welcome to call me at... Uh, six seven eight three eight one five three eight three. Hello. Yeah, I lost it too. Archon. Oh. oh no, no, not when she's leaving the contact information. <laughs> oh, no. no, I'm on that I'm on that the course outline page and it has, you know, find a local master and I got her her picture and everything up here, but the number she just gave is different than the number they have next to her name here. Well give the one that's on the website and then uh I'll put it in the show notes in the description if if it's a, if it's a discrepancy. But just so we can have it recorded, if you can rattle off her number, that'd be great, David. Okay. So the number that I'm looking at here on the website for uh, Archana Patel is 678-802-9454. Awesome. And then her cool. site is the, uh, the avatarcourse.com. Avatar right. And if you just want general information on the avatar, uh, you have the avatarpath.com. So yeah. using those two together then, you know, you'll find out more information in addition to what we've covered in the podcast. And David just left the contact information for Archna for you guys to get in touch with her. And you guys have just been in tune to another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. This is Hamza. And I am David. And it was a pleasure speaking with Archna. And for those that are listening to the podcast and want to get in contact with her, uh, check out the information in the description. And we look forward to speaking with you guys on our next podcast. All right. Thank you. Peace out. Peace.
Listen to Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective on Radio Public. It's a free, easy-to-use app that helps listeners like you find and support shows like ours. When you listen to our show on Radio Public, we receive direct financial support every time you hear an episode. Experience our show and Radio Public today by listening to the show link in our episode notes, and thank you for listening. Thanks again for checking out another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homies Perspective podcast. Please check us out on our website at intrinsicmotivation.life where you can click on the speak pipe button and leave any suggestions for a future podcast that you'd like us to cover. Also check us out on our social media sites. We have a YouTube channel, Facebook page, iTunes podcast, in addition to Stitcher and Google Play, all under Intrinsic Motivation from a Homies Perspective. Check you out next time. Have a great day.